Hello guys, the concept I want to explain you today is something I told you a lot of times, but uh, this time I want to tell you more about that thanks to a particular experiment. I'm going to take two different drives with two different skids level in terms of pure performance. And I'm going to show you that uh, unless uh, you're a pro, lower is your skills level, faster you'll be if uh, you'll go slow. Yeah, you heard it right. Going slower, sometimes it's the answer to go faster. Just allow me to show you what I'm talking about. So, the first volunteer for this experiment is Ibanez132, a Polish sim racer who started his sim racing adventure not so far ago. He's improving step by step every week and he's trying to get better at his constancy. We start the exercise with a slow race pace and we'll keep that race pace with almost identical lap times for three laps. After those three laps, we'll speed up the race pace by one second for more three laps. After those three laps, we speed up by one other second and uh, step by step every three laps until he won't be able to keep the car on the track anymore. I'm the pace car in front of him. In fact, I keep my eyes constantly on him on my mirror. The car we're using is a four-wheel drive Lamborghini Huracan Performante, 640 horsepower on semi-slick tires. The track is Brands Hatch. I chose this track because it's very technical, with uh, very few and short straight lines. It's perfect track uh, to test the driving skills. So we start with a very slow race pace between 1 minute 41 and 500 and 1 minute 41. With this race pace, he's very comfortable as you can see. We are almost cruising. Okay, let's go directly to the next step. Okay, as you saw in the mirror, he was very relaxed, no problem. Let's go slightly faster, one second per lap faster compared to the previous stint. It's still a pretty slow race pace with this car, so he shouldn't have any issue. no problem, we're still far away from the full potential of this car, and the other driver is getting used to the car and to the track in every lap. The learning process never ends. We can push one second faster without problems. Let's go!
he could even do 100 laps with this race pace without any problem. Keep in mind also the car is getting grippy. With faster lap times, tires are getting hot and this improves the grip. So this makes the car faster and easier to drive. Let's go with the next step. Still no mistakes? No problem. Let's speed up the race pace once again by one second. But uh, things are getting a bit harder for him now. In the last stint uh, you saw his driving style was getting less precise. Soon or late, uh, we knew this was going to happen. But uh, the exercise isn't over. Today I feel a bit sadistic. <laughs> I want him to push more. Let's go. In this moment I want to make you think about the lap times. On the race pace included between 1 minute 36 and 700 and 1 minute 37 200 to make 3 laps the total time was of 4 minutes 49 and 900. On the race pace between 1 minute 35 400 and 1 minute 35 900 to make 3 laps he needed 4 minutes 49 500 mistakes included. So, by going slower, he needed the same amount of time to complete 3 laps with a faster race pace. And keep in mind, mistakes could be even worse, so the loss of time could be even greater. But uh, the exercise isn't over. Let's see what happens with a faster race pace. Another mistake. Keep in mind another thing. Try to enter in his head, in his brain. He's doing his best, he's putting all the efforts to go faster and drive better. And despite that, he keeps failing. A normal person will get frustrated because of that. But what happens when you get frustrated? You drive even worse! Because you're angry with yourself and you can't focus properly on what you're doing. So it's a vicious circle, because uh, you want to go faster, at any cost, but the result is you're going slower. And this shows you what happens when you try to overcome your limits. Remember this, you can't overcome your limits, even me. If I overcome my limits, I surely end like him. At this point, we know pushing harder is completely useless. So, let's retake the two previous stints. In this stint, between 1 minute 34 seconds and 300, 
and 1 minute 34 800, the total time of 3 laps is 4 minute 54 400, including all the mistakes. So for him it's worse to go faster, despite he's able to do a lap with his race pace. It's useless to go faster when you can't keep the race pace for several laps. Ok, maybe there are some skeptical people who don't believe me. So I repeated the test with a French guy on Automobilista 2. Same track, but this time we'll use a race car, a 600 horsepower Porsche 911 GT1. Faster than the previous Lamborghini, but also more grippy. We did exactly the same exercise. And here I'm going to show you the second half of it. Because uh, you know already how it works. <laughs> Let's go! No problem on the race pace between 1 minute 24.9 and 1 minute 25.3. But this car is capable to go under 1 minute 20 on this track, so there is still a lot of margin. For that reason, let's continue the exercise. J'arrive au grand droite. Et là, je suis au droite serré. See? Also in this case, increasing the race pace by just one second was a bad idea. This was his first mistake after 12 clean laps. A big loss of time. Surely he was fast in the previous stint of 3 laps. But uh, let's continue. We should go one second faster than this now, because of this mistake he's struggling to go faster because he's not trusting his car anymore, he's afraid he could make another mistake. Because of that we restart the stint from this lap. Let's go for three more laps. lap I was pushing one second faster and immediately went out of the track. Apparently he managed to keep a race pace of 3 laps include between 1 minute 22.5 and 1 minute 22.9. But this doesn't mean it's a comfortable race pace for him. I can clearly see he's putting a lot of effort on what he's doing and I don't know how many laps he could resist with his race pace. But the exercise is clear. If you manage to keep a race pace of 3 consecutive laps, the next stint of 3 laps will be 1 second faster. So let's go! Ah, 
As you saw, the total time on the first and second stints are almost identical, with the difference on the first slower stint he has been more constant thanks to the slower race pace. It was useless to push more than the second stint, because as you saw he reached his limit and he started making a lot of mistakes, which costed him more than 20 seconds. And keep in mind also that the major were disabled, otherwise the gap would have been greater. So, moral of the story. Forget about the sentence in doubt flat out, because as you can see it's completely wrong. Stop pushing like an animal. During races, prefer constancy over pure performance. Of course, it's just my advice, which I proved with this exercise with these two drivers. Then, of course, it's uh, just your choice. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, see you on my next video.